Hey, this is Ben Ingram from the Atlanta Braves Radio Network, and you're about to go riding with the Braves, presented by Chevrolet. See who else is joining us today. We're joined by Ron Washington here in this Chevy Tahoe High Country. I like this thing. I love this thing. It's all right, right? Yeah, I didn't realize it was uh, this efficient as push button. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is uh, very nice. The screen is very nice. Uh huh. Matter so, of fact, are we floating? I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a smooth ride. Yes, it is. So it's a good one for us to ride today. Well, I'm so glad that that you agreed to do this because some of my favorite guys to visit with for, for this particular feature are lifers in the game, and that's you. I mean, that, that takes. That's incredible what it takes to be a lifer in this game. You have to be very good and very talented, and, and that's you. And for you, it started as a player. Yes. And uh, I mean, you had a great, people know you as a manager and a coach, but you had a really good career. And how much fun was it just to be a player in the big league? Well, it was. It's the best thing that can happen. You know, you have to be persistent. You have to persevere. You have to have passion, and you have to deal with the obstacles. You know, you got to deal with all the negativity. And when I mention negativity, I'm talking about the things that don't go right in your career, mm -hmm. how you handle them, how you move forward, um, how they become an experience, something you can pass on to someone else. Actually, that's what the game of baseball is, and a life in baseball is, is the experiences you gain and experiences that you can forward towards someone else and hoping that it could help their career. Mm -hmm. So, Well, what's your impact on so many of the players with this ball club and in recent years? and the influence that you have on them. That obviously came from somewhere. Where did you gain influence? Who influenced you and who gave you that perspective that you can pass on out of these guys? Well, I gained my influence from my rookie league coach. Uh, the first time I met him, I got off an airplane in Sarasota, and his first comment to a group of guys was, you got one foot on the ground and one foot back on one step of the airplane. And those guys say, what is he talking about? He's telling you if you don't perform, you're gone. Yeah. I mean, I was already had that type of wisdom you know he was a shouter his name is Buzzy Keller he was a screamer it didn't bother me because I got screamed and shouted at by my mom dad <laughs> brothers and sisters right the people that 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 influence you are the people that you around and it's up to you to gather the information and not be so caught up in um, how they are, are saying what they're saying, mm -hmm. but get the message out of what they're saying. Mm -hmm. And that's what good mentors and good teachers do. They may scream and holler, they may cuss, they may say things you don't like, but get the message. Right. And what you will get out of that message is they care about you. So really, a, a lesson in who you surround yourself with is so important because if you surround yourself with those people, that's obviously some, going to be something you absorb. If you surround yourself with negativity, you're going to be full of negativity. You surround yourself with positivity, that don't mean negativity won't come in play. Mm -hmm. But you try to surround yourself and, and take a, a little bit from every person that you meet in life and see where that can fit in your life. And, and it's all experience. No matter how you look at it, it's all experience. And that's what happened to me. From my rookie league coach, my A-ball coach, my double-A coach, my triple-A coach, till I got to the big leagues, um, it was the same experience. Mm -hmm. I was learning things from everyone that I was around, including the players, including young people that you meet. Everyone has something to give. You just got to be there to realize they're giving it. That's great wisdom. All right, so let me ask you this. At what point did you think to yourself, once I finish playing, I can go coach. I have something I can give to young players. And when did you think you'd be good at that or at least something you'd want to give it a shot with? Well, I was so into playing. And when I was playing, I was a coach because a lot of guys would ask me questions about the game and I had to answer. Mm -hmm. Now, it didn't, I didn't feel like I was the smartest guy in the world, but I paid attention. Um, I remember the first time I went to the big leagues with the Dodgers, Reggie Smith, Davey Lopes, these guys, Ron C. The first thing they told me when I hit that clubhouse, you hit observe, you hit learn, and you're not here to take no money out of our pocket. Mm -hmm. I, that resonated. Mm -hmm. And one time I wasn't in the dugout when those guys came off the field, and they was asking, where, where the hell is Wash? Well, I was down there using the urinal. Right. You know, in Dodger Stadium, that's when they had the urinal down there uh -huh. back in the 70s. Uh -huh. And I was using the urinal, and I said, I'm down here. You know, doing what I'm doing. Uh -huh. He said, okay, you better not be in that clubhouse. They demanded that you paid attention to the game. And when I grew up, 
and became an older guy and became someone that people looked up to. I demanded that they paid attention to the game. I demanded that they love the game for the game and understand the game, not for the worth that the game will give to you. The drills that you use that have helped so many players, and, and I know I've, I've read stories about, uh, I mean, it's going back to when you are in Oakland where you're doing some of these drills. Where did that come from, and how has that evolved over the years with, with your ability to improve players defensively? Well, my my mentor on the infield was Chico Fernandez with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Uh, he was a workaholic. Uh, he didn't care what he said to you when he said it to you. And his 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 mantra was, don't be listening to how I tell you what, the, what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Listen to the message and what I'm saying. And that always resonated with me, the message. Right, not the tone. Not the tone. You know, the tone is just a delivery. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To, to let you know the seriousness of what is going on. But there's a message in the tone. And if you get the message, you can ignore the noise, mm-hmm. which is my tone. Mm-hmm. My tone is just noise. Right. But get the message. And that's the one thing that Chico Fernandez uh, taught to me. Um, he used to get me up at 7 o'clock in the morning while everyone else is still sleeping. I was complaining at first, but then I realized this guy sees something in me. And what, what he saw in me was he liked me. And I recognized that he liked me. That's why he's getting me up in the morning. Mm-hmm. And I quit warned about getting up in the morning and going out there and get that experience. Right. So once I got that experience from him, he always had a lot of short drills. Not like I do, but he did short drills. Mm-hmm. And I improvised when I became a coach after I retired in 1990. And I started improvising. And that's where the knee drill came from. That's where the hands drill came from. And I realized the one thing that happens for an infielder is the ball comes off the bat. And the only thing that matters when the ball comes off the bat is picking up the last hop. Mm-hmm. So we consistently work on the last hop. Now, that last hop that we consistently work on, it's not always consistent. Right. And that's the key. Mm -hmm. Because if I consistently put the ball in the same spot over and over and over, I'm 70 years old. I'll never miss a ball. Mm -hmm. So that's where that developed. Then I went to the pad. I wasn't the first one to use a pad. But I used the pad to isolate hands. Right. The palm of the hand. Uh Uh-huh. And the pad is a flat. It's flat. And the only way you're going to keep it on there is you're going to have to be force against force. The ball coming in, the hand's going out. That's how I develop the ball where you, where you see the guys use their hand out in front of their body. I see. Whether you're using one hand, it's out front. Whether you're using the back hand, it's out front. Whether you're using two hands, it's out front. And, and, and out front causes you to see. The more you see, the more you will receive. A lot of guys miss balls because they get blinded where they try to use their hands. I see. And there's no perfection. But the repetition. The repetition is is to make certain that you can be consistent. Right. We're not concerned about you being 100%. Doing the right thing is the key. Mm -hmm. Because when you do the right thing and you get the wrong results, it don't affect you mentally. Mm Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Right. I can pick that ball up after I've messed up, give it back to the pitcher, and I'm begging for the next one. You can get to the next play without dra- being, being dragged down by the last that's, one. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And as long as you do the right thing, I could deal with mistakes. Uh-huh. When you don't do the right thing, now you have to recognize where you went wrong. Right. That's all. That's it. That's the only way it should affect you. Mm-hmm. And that's the way I preach it. Uh, it's been funny to me. We go on the road or, or teams come in here. And I see other teams doing the same thing. Well, I've seen guys a with a tennis shittily. racket. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've seen a guy with a tennis racket. Yeah. I've seen a, a, a jugs machine. Yeah. But all trying to do what you do. And, and I, I find that so fascinating because they're looking at you and thinking, man, look what he's done with this infield and other infields. we got to do the same thing. That's got to make you feel great. Well, it does make me feel great. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to tell you, I've been in the game a long time. And, and I've seen very few people on the field working Mm -hmm. now everywhere i go i see lots of people on the field working and that's good for the game of baseball that's right you know they can try to do what i do Mm -hmm. but the key to them trying to do what i do when i do talk to them is i tell them make this yours right you create whatever you feel you got to create to get your boys to do what you need them to do Mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be exactly what ron washington do Mm -hmm. because you won't be able to do 
exactly what Ron Washington do because I'm an inventor of that. That's right. You're the godfather. Yes. <laughs> when you win a World Series, I mean, you're happy for everybody. But there's there are some people that I was just a little bit happier for. You're one of them. Well, thank you. I, I can't imagine, number one, what it was like being so close in 2011. So to get back there and do it and see the hard work pay off, see your work every single day with these guys pay off the way that it did. I mean, I, I can't even imagine what that must have been like for you to experience that after some of the heartbreak you'd had when you're managing in Texas. Well, I'm still trying to explain the feeling mm -hmm. because you worked so hard starting in February mm -hmm. to be a part of having an opportunity to win a World Series. And I've been to three of them and I finally won one. Mm -hmm. I've been in the game 52 years. I'm still trying to trying to be able to explain the feeling because I know what it took to do it because I was in that clubhouse when we was written off. I was in that clubhouse when nobody gave us a chance. I was in that clubhouse when we had to go out and face the mighty Dodgers. I was in that clubhouse when we played Milwaukee to open up the series and they beat us in the first game two to one. And all the talk around Milwaukee was uh, the Atlanta Braves is, uh, you know, we wasn't supposed to be anything. Right. But what they didn't know is inside that clubhouse, we never fractured. We stayed true to what we are and who we are. And that was work ethic. And that work ethic kicked in sometime in August. And once we found it, we never lost it. And that's what it's about. Now, people say, well, they got hot at the right time. Well, we was trying to find that streak from day one of the season mm -hmm. because we were not being the Atlanta Braves. And then when we found who we were, we were Atlanta Braves. Yeah. And what people seen from, from, from August till we won the World Series was who we were supposed to be mm -hmm. in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And we never lost that. We never stopped fighting for that. We never stopped trying to reach to get there. And when we got there, all everybody else seen after that was ass and elbows. <laughs> That's right. You've done a great job. You've done a great job. Watch, as always, thank you so much for your time today. Well, it was a pleasure to get a chance to talk a little baseball. Absolutely. A little man. wisdom. You know, I, I enjoy it, and I'm having a ton of fun. All right, man. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.